This week's Torah portion of B'Shalach, we see a human behavior of the Jewish people that seemingly seems astonishing, but when you delve into it more, it, it seems rather um, commonplace that even today we fall prey to the certain uh, that type of behavior. Jewish people, upon leaving Egypt, all of a sudden get to the Sea of Reeds, the Red Sea, and they don't know what to do. The Egyptians are coming up behind them, the sea's in front of them, they start complaining to God. God says, Moshe davens to Hashem, he prays and says, please, Hashem says, don't worry about it, I have it covered. He splits the sea. One miracle. I remind you, this is after ten plagues. They complained, they split the, God splits the sea. They finish that up, all of a sudden now they're, they're in the desert, they don't have water. Oh, this water is bitter, what can we do? We don't have any water. I'll take care of it, Hashem says. Moshe, throw a little tree in there, it'll sweeten it up. They go on further, what are we going to do? We're so hungry, we're starving. God says, I got you covered. And he sends manna from heaven, food falling from heaven every night, every morning it's there. Then further on, and it keeps happening, we don't have any water, we'll get it from the rock, don't, no problem. Is that when you look at it, it seems like, how could the Jewish people complain and be scared that something's going to happen to them after God promised them, I will take care of you. Look, I just did 10 miraculous plagues, no human can do that. That was godly, and I, had, and I took care of you. The sea, I split the sea for you. One thing after the other, and they keep complaining, is that I think a couple of messages you see from this. Firstly, you see the concept that inspiration fades. Even something as miraculous that occurs in front of your eyes, when you're faced with a challenge sometimes the next day, and you're so caught up in that challenge, you almost forget the fact that, one second, but God just performed that miracle yesterday. It's so easy to forget it. And we see that consistently ourselves is that we could have just an example I was thinking about is that you know your wife, you and your wife you have a baby and you just think thank, thank God you see the, the miracles that took place for this baby to to be conceived and be born and two weeks later the baby gets sick and then all of a sudden we're up in arms what are we gonna do what's gonna happen well what do you mean what, what are you what are you so nervous about that same God that created the baby he'll take care of the baby as well through the messengers his messengers doctors medicine etc but yet we sometimes forget the miracles that happen and God being there and we get nervous. And the second message is, is that we may think, even back in the de times of when the Jewish people were in the desert, that yeah, Hashem took me out, but maybe, maybe he's forsaken us now. Nah, I'm still here, Hashem says. Yeah, but maybe this time uh, he's not going to help us. I'm still there. All the more so in our generation where we don't see God on a miraculous basis that's apparent, and God is not performing one great feat after the next, we may think, yeah, Hashem, I believe that He was there back then. And He loved the Jewish people back then. But does He still love us now? Is it the same powerful God? And that's why Hashem commands us in our prayers, Kiddush, all the time, Remember when I took you out of Egypt. I'm commanding you today to say it. Nachmanides explains this is why. God wants to say, don't, doesn't want people to say, yeah, back then God was there. He's not here anymore. Hashem says, no, I'm here. The same powerful God that loved you in the desert is the same powerful God that's here today. I'm performing miracles for you. You may not notice it, but if we open our eyes, we can see those miracles on a day-to-day -day basis. I'd like to wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom and a wonderful week.